So if you're missing layup, I've got something that's gonna help you, especially in game situations. I've had videos that cover like, if you're just missing like regular layups, but most people don't just miss the regular layups. You know, that's not the one that gives most people problems. It's the ones maybe a little more on the move and in traffic and things like that, right? So when it comes to game time, you don't just go one, two, right up to the rim every single time, right? There's a lot of layups where you gotta adjust your shot, move in different angles, you know, cross the rim, things like that. So what I wanna cover is how to make different angle finishes in games. So when you're moving a different way or you gotta move the ball in a different direction to evade a defender, this is the video that's gonna help you stop missing them forever. Let's jump into it. Okay, so first let's talk about like your basic layup, not just like how to make your basic layup, but a basic layup when there's a defender here and you've gotta adjust your shot. So if I'm coming right to the basket, just like you do in your layup line, you're not gonna get a nice easy layup if there's someone right here, right here, right here. You're gonna have to adjust, right? So the first option is, let's say you got a defender in front of you and you're trying to finish over them. Well then what you wanna work on, number one, is your overhand finishes, because those are typically gonna be better for getting that shot over the defender, or if you've got enough space for them, an underhand finish. And I would recommend you practice both depending on what's more comfortable and what your spacing is. But when I'm really close, I usually wanna do that overhand finish. The other thing I'm gonna to need to change is how high I finish, right? If I'm here, I'm trying to finish over my defender, I'm probably not gonna be able to hit that corner of the square like people are always taught, right? This corner right here on the left side, whoop, right there. And then even with it not being a perfect like touch, I'm usually gonna get that bumped. So in a game when you got a defender here, what you wanna change is try to get it above that square. So either that corner and kind of straight up above it or directly above like the middle, okay? If you'll notice if you get it directly above the middle, that ball almost always just drops straight down. So you'll just wanna practice in, in your workouts, getting that really high, right above the middle, the center area of that square. So when game time comes, you'll be able to react to that, no big deal. Defenders here, cool, I'll get that shot off nice and high, nice and quick, right over the top of them. It's like a floater. But instead of trying to go nothing but net, which is a little bit harder to make, that backboard's gonna give you the bounce almost every time. So now let's say I've got a defender here and I don't feel like finishing over them is an option. So my best option from there would be probably if I got the ball in this hand to finish to the side here, right? So you've gotta practice that, right? You gotta practice on being able to finish with the ball out here, first of all, so that's your first tip. But your second tip is where you're finishing and how you release that basketball. So when I'm trying to finish out to the side more, I'm probably gonna get more wrist involvement to get the ball to move sideways a little bit more. Now there's two things you can do really. You can do wrist like this, so it comes from under to the outside of the basketball like that, and put spin on. So I'm gonna go here, click that wrist real quick, and I'll put spin on. So now if I got a defender here, I can finish further out to the side on the backboard. So I'm not trying to aim here, I'm trying to aim more there on the side, outside the square. So they can't position where I'm gonna finish and it allows me to extend out here with the arm and then just put that spin on and that spin will carry the basketball across the backboard. Or if I wanna do more of just like a, you know, like my hand on the side and do like that, almost like a finger roll, but kind of from the side, then if I'm gonna do that, I need to think about like pushing the basketball further that way on the backboard mentally. That just will help you out because this spin is gonna, have the ball drop straight down. So if I'm gonna do that, I wanna get a little bit of a higher arcing shot and I wanna try to get it more above the center again like we did with that first finish. So I can kinda get the ball to drop a little more straight down and push it further that way in the air before it hits the glass. And then the other option is, let's say I've got a defender here. Well, you've got a couple things. You could either switch hands and then just go directly to the middle of the rim for the finish, but one thing you wanna keep in mind is, since I'm coming across now on that last step and kind of moving my body this way over here, my momentum is also moving my body and the basketball. So I gotta fight that momentum because if I just think about going straight to the rim, what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna do this. And the ball is gonna go too far to the right. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna get the ball to go straight down in, right? So I can either go right to the center of the rim or center backboard, but think about aiming that way. So if I move this way, ball, try to move that way more. So think about moving across more, almost like a hook shot, and that'll help 
pull the ball to that side. If I'm gonna go for the center of the rim with this, I wanna just aim kind of maybe to the center or slightly to the left. So, you know, if I'm gonna use this hand coming this way, either just aim right for the center or slightly to that side. Or if I'm gonna use backboard, again, try to aim for the middle above the square so you get that nice soft bounce, try to release it soft, or you can even aim slightly to that side. So I'm coming across here, I would aim for that corner to compensate for my body moving this way. Same thing though you could do also even with that same hand. So if I got a defender here and I feel like I can really evade them by taking the second step hard here and keeping in this hand, and I don't think that they're gonna be able to get in here, because you'll notice it's a little less protected than doing this, I can do that. But then again, I've got to really think about pushing the ball this way, right? And if you'll notice, once again, this spin, if it hits the backboard, it's gonna drop straight down or back that way towards you, which is not what we want. We want to pull it this way. So I've got to compensate again by thinking about moving the ball back further this way. So focus on moving that arm kind of back more or turning your body. Usually what I'll do actually, is I'll think about almost like 360 turning. So my shoulder is kind of turning into the shot as I finish. Now you might not end up actually doing a 360, but that shoulder turning here back towards the rim will help pull it across even though you got that spin going. So that will look like that. One other thing you could do is work on this spin, which to get a lot of spin on like that is tough. It's not as easy as coming from the outside like we did on this side. Like you can get a lot of spin on that way pretty easy. Having your hand come from the outside of the basketball but and rotating out like this and getting a lot of spin, that's a lot tougher, but you will get a lot more pull back that way. So something you can work on, it is more advanced, so I think the other options are better if you're more of a beginner. And then as you get better, you can start working on stuff like that. Now if I do it with this kind of a release and it drops straight down, then I probably want to aim for either right above the middle or right in the middle of the square on the top or on the opposite side I would aim for. I wouldn't probably hit it, but mentally I'm gonna aim for that so I know as I pull the ball across, because my body's going that way, I'll compensate and get that to drop straight down. If I'm gonna use this more unorthodox spin, then I can afford to kind of hit more like there, or at least mentally aim for there on the backboard, or even like right on the, the side. I like to go for like right there, or even that top corner right there. But with this spin, that'll pull it across that extra bit I need because my body again is coming this way. So as I put that spin on, you're gonna get that bounce more often than not. Okay, so next thing, let's think about like if I'm coming across the rim, like maybe there's a bunch of defenders here and there's an opening here and like a reverse layup's my best option. And this could also be even happening like a lot of times baseline, you know, you'll get these baseline layups. And coming here isn't always necessarily the best option. I'll, I'll give you all, uh, some tips to help you finish this angle in a second, but either of these, this angle, this angle, and you know you're gonna come reverse. A couple things you wanna keep in mind is, number one, we talked about when we're moving one way, kind of moving away from the basket, we wanna get some opposing force. But since we've got this tool in our tool belt now, that's one thing that'll help us a ton, and we won't have to push so hard to get the ball across. So two things that you can think about is number one, getting spin on that basketball, and number two, trying to pull across more. Then the other thing you'll want to focus on is, again, I focus on trying to hit the corner of the square, right there, this top left corner. If I'm gonna do a left hand reverse, right hand reverse, I would go right corner, okay? But with that spin and our arm pulling the ball that way, that's gonna help get us that perfect bounce to get the ball to come right in nine times out of 10. If you're not very good with the spin, just focus on trying to finish more towards the center to compensate. So if I'm gonna do more of a just let go like that, like a typical release, like a finger roll almost, then for that, try to get your arm across a little more and finish right in the middle above the backboard ideally, or you could finish tight with these reverses if there's really no defenders over here. So if you got defenders over here, try to finish up high on the backboard, That'll give you that perfect bounce. And then of course there's game situations where you feel like you've got to get to the rim really, really fast. And when you're doing that, when you're going full board of the rim and you don't feel like you got time to like get a really super high jump, or even if you do, if you're going full speed, like if you jump, inertia is gonna take over in the air and you're gonna keep moving forward pretty fast. So what you wanna do in those situations is think about trying to finish either a little shorter than you think and or I like to do both higher because again we know if we hit the backboard kind of high 
Nine times out of 10, we're gonna get a nice bounce straight down as it hits the backboard. It's gonna kind of make the touch on the backboard a little softer. And by getting the shot off, like thinking about like a little shorter, we'll compensate again for you moving so far this way that if you try to finish shorter than what you think, it should get it just about right. Now with this and really all the finishes I'm giving you, you've gotta like change mentally what you're aiming for maybe a little bit. Like what I give you might not be perfect, but you've gotta like start picking these spots out and then from there say, okay, is that working? Am I making the shots when I do them, when, you know, when I'm moving this way, when I'm going full speed, when there's a defender here and I'm adjusting. And if that spot that you're mentally trying to aim for isn't working because maybe you're changing the way you're spinning the basketball, then you might need to shift it a few inches to the left or to the right, maybe even a foot to the left or the right. But using these as starting points will start to give you a basis to know where you need to be. Now really all of this is just kind of a starting point. You've got to incorporate like the different types of finishes you're gonna need in game situations and figure out what adjustments you need to make. So if you click the top comment that I'll have pinned down below, I've got a playlist for you there. That's got a bunch of different layups that you can use around the rim to get your shot off, but you're gonna to have to keep these things in mind with them and practice them and then focus on what you're aiming for so you can master them. That'll make you an unstoppable scorer around the rim. If you wanna to continue to improve your game, be sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications so you can catch the newest videos. They are all gonna help you big time. By the way, where are my handle geeks at that are on that notification squad? Drop me a comment down below with hashtag handle geek let me know i'll see you in that playlist pinned to the comments and make moves today